Steve, what have we got here? It's a brown birch belete, uh, Lecinum scabrum, ah. and it's a very fine specimen. Look at that. Let me just uh, focus in. There we go. And what are its features? It's this um, stem covered with fine kind of scales, hence mm. the, the name scabrum, and uh, and then this grey-brown uh, cap, the white spongy pores underneath instead mm. of gills. And that's always a sign of uh, the Belit family, or uh, the Belitus tribe. And this particular one is always associated with birch trees. It grows in happy association with their roots. Um, in other words, it's got a symbiotic relationship and it provides the tree with nutrients and in return gets some sugars and starches um, itself. Mm. So is it, a, is it a mycorrhizal fungus? It's a mycorrhizal fungus, yeah. So, isn't that amazing? And so most of the fungus, tell us about what most of the fungus does in the rest of the year. Uh, well, in the rest of the year you don't see the fungus, that's not to say that it's not active, that's not to say it's not alive. What we have in front of us at the moment is the fruiting body. This is like the apple that's ripened on the tree and popped up above the ground ready to release its spores, whereas uh, underneath the ground is a, a network, a three-dimensional network that penetrates all through the soil that you would never be able to extract or see in one piece. Um, and at this time of the year, under the right conditions, they, uh, the soil, um, the, uh, the fruit bodies pop up, ready to yeah, release, keep on the, going. Uh, release the spores. Excellent. And uh, Belit can release 40 million spores in an hour, so uh, obviously it's a case of some fall on stony ground, um, because if you need to make that many spores, obviously it means that only a very, very small percentage of them survive um, in order to, or find the right conditions in which to start a new fungal growth. And the other big question is, is it tasty? Can you eat it? Um, in this case, you can. Uh, Belites, most of the belites you can eat. This one has a rather fibrous, woody stem, so you wouldn't bother eating the stem. Uh, I've eaten the, the uh, caps many times and they have a, um, a delicious flavour. They tend to go a little bit slimy when cooked, so they're, they're probably better as a flavouring in a stew or a soup or um, casserole, something like that. Oh, and is it, oh, are we lucky to have these at Wildwood? Absolutely. Um, I mean, Wildwood's got a rich variety of fungi in general, and many of them are associated with the trees. But those that aren't, if it wasn't for the fact that we had them, we would be up to our ears in leaves because um, we have lots of leaf rotters and we have lots of wood rotters and all the other vital jobs that fungi perform in nature. It's all a big cycle. The leaves fall off, branches fall off, they rot down and then they go back to feed the trees thanks to the fungi in the Absolutely. soil. Absolutely, yeah, that's, that's it. Well, thanks very much, Steve. 